Speaking of adding to the end, at this point, I'm going to show you how when you enter in more items than there appears to be space in the list box, we will automatically get a scroll bar. So I've added in a strawberry shake and a brownie. Here comes a chocolate malt. Next, we'll have a cupcake. Then a slice of apple pie and some birthday cake. And there's the scroll bar automatically appeared once the number of items in our list exceeded what could be displayed in the list box, given its size. Next, we're going to insert an item at a certain index. We're going to use an input box for this. With the text box, we'll hold the item we want to insert into the list, but we'll need to use an input box to discover where the user wants to place it in the list. This is a strategy to use when you want to place it somewhere besides the end. So we're going to have two variables here. str index as string is going to hold the answer to the input box, and then int index will actually be the numeric index. And we're going to set it equal to negative one right now. That reason will become more obvious later on. We'll use a do loop to control the user, knowing that the first item of the index is zero, and the last item is always one less than the quantity or the count of items in the list box. So we can loop until, or we must loop until, int index is greater than or equal to zero, because zero is okay, and int index is less than lstdessert.items.count. Right now our count is seven, while the last valid index is actually six. So this loop can end once we know that the what has been input by the user is actually in an acceptable range for this list box. So here's our input box asking users to indicate what index they would like to use. And we will make str index equal what the user types in. Remember, input boxes always return strings. We want to make sure what was typed in is actually a number. We can use the isNumeric function to do that. So we'll see if isNumeric, and then in parentheses we'll put str index. We could say equals true there if we would like, but we don't have to. I'll just use isNumeric with str index in parentheses. If that is true, that it is numeric, then it is okay to make int index equal the numeric part of str index. We'll have to convert that to an integer. There it is with c int. At this point, we're pretty sure we're safe that we've gotten an index that is OK. So we asked them what index they would like. Negative 88 would be bad. So we're staying in the loop. 100 is too big. We stay in the loop. 5 is OK. So far, things look good. Now we know it's OK to insert the item that was typed into the text box, as long as they actually typed something into the text box. So once again, we'll make sure that txtitem.txt is not string.empty. If it is, they didn't type anything in there. But if it isn't string.empty, we're OK to grab what was in the uh, text box, and we'll use that to insert the item into the list. lstdessert.items.insert, and then we put the number where we want to insert it first, comma, then what we want to insert, which for us is txtitem.txt. Once again, first is the number where you want to put it, and second is the item you want to actually put into the list. We've used this strategy earlier in the program. We'll clear out the text box so it's ready for the next item. If it turns out there's nothing in the text box, we'll give the users a message and let them know that there's nothing in there, and therefore no insertion is going to happen.
And lastly, we'll put the focus back into that text box at the bottom of our form, TXT item, with TXT item dot focus. So if we want to add brownies, we'll pick a place to put it at the two spot. So it should go after peanut butter cup. And it does. Chocolate chip cookie is zero, peanut butter cup one, and brownies two. Notice that everything else shifted down one index. We sent cupcake to the very first spot that time, which is actually zero. It has an index of zero. If we want to place cherry cheesecake in the fourth position, there's where it should go. There it is, in the place where bear claw used to be. Bear claw shifted down, as did everything else. We can also remove an item at a given index. Maybe whatever appears in an index of two you want to get. We're going to have to use a very similar strategy again of getting a number out of an input box. It's almost exactly like what we did in the previous sub. It's going to require a do loop. We have to loop until we get a valid index, which means it's got to be greater than or equal to zero, and it has to be less than the count of items in the list box. Remember, the last valid index is one less than the count of items in your list box. We have seven at the start, items in the list box, that means the last index is 6, from 0 through 6. We'll display an input box. It will look very similar to the one we just did, except we'll be inquiring where the index is we would like to remove the object instead of inserting an object. We'll check to make sure that what was typed into the input box is numeric, and if it is, then it's okay to assign it to int index. So we'll check to see if the string, str index, is numeric. And if it is, if it's true that it is numeric, then we know we have a number in there and we can assign it to int index. If str index is not numeric, if it doesn't have a number in there, then there will be no assignment to int index inside this if because we'll never get inside the if. But we did already make int index equal negative 1, which would make the loop occur all over again. Well, once we're out of this loop, we know we're okay that we've got an index that is valid, so it's okay to remove the item from the list using the dot remove at method. And we simply put the number of the index where we need to remove the item. You see it above there where we're typing right now, lstdessert.items.removeat, and then put the number, which for us is in the variable int index. We're also going to clear out the text box so it's ready for the next item, and put the focus in the text box also ready for the next item. Very convenient for the user. We'll make sure that loop works OK. Negative 88 is invalid. The We are asked again. 100 is invalid. We're asked again. 2 is valid. That's bear claw. And it's gone. 4 is valid. That item is gone. And that is the remove at method. 